Hello everybody and welcome to Skip Allen Paints and to the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Now before I really get into this video, I want to tell you something. If you've come to this video through YouTube and you're at my YouTube channel, I can't put as much information as I would like uh, on YouTube. And so it is best if you go to my blog at http colon reverse slash reverse slash skip allen paints dot com reverse slash if you'll go there you'll find uh, the brushes that i'm going to be working with here you'll find a link to a brush class that is uh, the best brush class for a corel painter i've ever seen by jason moranto and i'll give you links to that and everything a lot more stuff the video that prompted this particular uh um, blog post uh, will be on the blog as well. So if you're coming here via my YouTube channel, please go also to my blog to get the rest of the information. All right, so we're going to turn that off. There may be a way to show that in Camtasia. I'm not really sure. If I have time, I'll look it up. Okay, so I'm going to add a watercolor layer. Now, what happened is... Um, a while back, um, I think it was probably two months ago, <clears throat> that one of the blog followers posted a video in my uh, uh, responses in the comments section of a uh, Chinese Corel painter master. He lives in Taiwan. I would tell you his name, but I can't pronounce it. Anyway, this particular video was really, really quite uh, interesting. And the guy started making flowers like this. And the color changes. See how you get that sort of blue-green or blue down at the bottom? He was actually working with more of an orange. Let's go up here, red-orange. And I want to take this to white, so I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so the brush did something like this. It went from orange to a kind of a green. Now, the follower of the blog said, I, I wasn't quite sure what he said, but... <laughs> He was uh, the guy, the guys from Russia and frequently the, the translation at Google kind of think uh, makes things differently. But later I realized that what he was asking was how was this brush made? Well, I looked at it and I could see the variation of color. So my first thought was color expression, which is really what I thought he was using. But if he was using color expression, both colors would show here. The main color would be one, the additional color would be the second color. And that's not what happened here. And I thought about this and thought about this for a long time, and I couldn't figure out how we were going from this orange to these other kind of colors here. So I posted in a forum that uh, is populated by some Corel painter masters and uh, the Corel advisory committee. <clears throat> and I thought, well, these guys will know how to do it. So I posted it and the person who answered uh, and was able to produce the brush was Jason Moranto. Now, Jason, Jason is an expert with painter. He knows it in and out. He really knows the software very well. And he has created a Corel Painter brush class that is eight hours of videos um, that is excellent. I have seen these videos and it is, it is I mean, Jason is gifted with uh, being an instructor. It is very simple, direct approach to brushes. And if you ever want to know how to make brushes in Corel Painter and to understand the process, this class is a must class. Okay? So to see about the class and where, where to go get it and so forth, you're going to need to go to the blog. Um, 
so that you can get the link for it. But if you Google Jason Moranto, um, or I think he works for, oh gosh, I forgot the name of it now that I'm doing the video, but again, it will be on my blog, and maybe I can put that information uh, in the uh, down below this particular video at YouTube. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. Anyway, so what did Jason come up with here? Well, what he decided to do, if we go, we're on his brush, and we go to our advanced brush control, which is right there, and we come down to well, the well brush control panel. If you notice, he has taken dry out and dropped it down from 2000 or 20,000 or whatever the first number is to 2014. And that for him, he thinks dry out is the best way to work to get this uh, look that our brush maker, uh, that our Chinese uh, artist was creating. And as you can see, it, it works quite well. The only thing is you really can't control the color very well. It uh, You're going to get whatever color you get. <clears throat> okay? Now, I'm surprised that I didn't think about going to the well uh, panel as well because I have a brush that was in my very first watercolor set that if we go to well... It has the resaturation reduced and the bleed high with no dry out. Now, if I play with this brush, the wild thing is I'm going to put it to white so that I'm painting with white. Let's close that. And look, I don't get white. I get black or gray. And if I lighten my touch it will go back and erase what was put there. See how it erases? But you also have noticed that I keep getting multiple colors as I paint. Well, that's kind of like the situation that uh, the Chinese Corel Painter Master was getting. He was getting these this color. See, I have no colors up here. And the color is coming in because we have our resaturation lower than our bleed. Okay, so that will give us multiple colors. Now, also, if this were if we do like Jason, we take this up to 100%, this up to 100%. And let's give it a little color now. See, I'm not going to get that variation of color that I had before. But if I drop the dry out, let's drop it down to 247. Now I'm going to get some variety of color. Might need to go down a little more. <laughs> That's a little much. But if we go to white, you'll begin to see the variations of color come in. <clears throat> so I was sort of there back years ago. This was probably back in 2009 that I was making this particular brush. I'd just forgotten about it. So um, dry out can work, but also not only dry out, but if you have your bleed higher than your resaturation, you'll get multiple colors uh, with a watercolor brush. Now, when I say a watercolor brush, I'm talking about real watercolor and watercolor. So if I were to go back to Painter 13 brushes and I look here under our brush types we have real watercolor and watercolor those two will definitely give you a variety of colors based on uh, having either your resaturation higher than your bleed 
I'm sorry, reverse that. Resaturation lower than bleed, or you've got your dry out down, uh, drop down pretty low. Okay, so let's look at the brush again. We'll get rid of that. So here's Jason's brush. And what he's using here again is he's taking the well, and his resaturation is up, his bleed is up, but it's the dry out that gives him the color. And with it on white, you see you get this variation of color. If you put it on a particular color, let's go orange, then you're going to get that color to start with, and as you continue to paint, the other variety of color is going to come in. Now, what that's going to be is uh, not easy to explain. I mean, it, I, I can't tell you. You're not going to know exactly what that's going to be. Now, if you use this brush for a leaf, something like this, it's not very good because we get this variety of color along the line. So Jason made another brush that he called the stem brush. And if you look at the well in the stem brush, in this case, he's dropping the resaturation, has the bleed up and uh, dry out. And that's the way I was talking about uh, my original brush was. But so if we go to a green color and we begin to paint with this, we're going to get a green and it will change colors as you go along. But they're not changing quite as much. And so the brush looks a little better. Now, for my taste, if I were trying to do this, I probably would not use a stem brush that uh, makes any variation of color. Okay. Then I. I went ahead and made a brush kind of based, I mean, I started with uh, the brush that Jason had, but I changed the, I, I kept the dry out high. I kept resaturation high and bleed low. And I also added velocity for color expression. Now remember, color expression is going to pick up these two colors, all right? So it will pick up that orange color first as the slow uh, movement, and it will pick up the yellow second. Now, like I said, this is set up to velocity. So it's the speed with which I paint if we go Slowly, I'm getting that orange. As I speed up, I get the green. Okay? So we're going like that. So making that same form, I would go slow and then speed up. Speed up. And there you go, you've got the, the painting that the uh, Chinese master was doing. I really love that painting and that form uh, of flower that he was working with. And so <clears throat> I'm kind of doing that same form as an um, honor to that guy because he's, I mean, he's really, he does beautiful work. Now let's talk about velocity when used with uh, color expression. Velocity is the speed with which you paint, okay? So we go from slow to fast, and we go from orange to green. If I reverse the main additional colors, now we'll go, huh, that was weird. I should have gotten green to start off with. The green is getting, that's interesting. It's something I hadn't really noticed before. Let's go really slow. See, wh what happens is as the speed increases, you get a combination of the green and blue. But where I'm going here is the green is not strong enough 
at the speed I'm working on. So I need to come over here. I have brush calibration enabled. You know that brush calibration allows you to set up the brush tracking for each individual brush. And what I found is for my velocity to work, I need this velocity scale to be about 0.5 and the velocity power to be anywhere from around 0.5 to 1. Actually, I can go down to about 0.3 here. So if I took this down to 0.3, That was not 0.3, that was 0.6. So let's try that again. Okay, so we're down to 0.3. Now let's see if that made any difference. Not a lot. So let's reverse that. Let's take this up to point to one point. And we'll do it again. There we go, that's better. So now when I go slow, I get more green. And as I continue speedier, I get less. Now I'm still not getting enough for my taste. So let's come over here, let's darken this a bit. See if that helps. It does, you get more green there because see that first mix of color is the orange and green. And if the green is stronger, then we're better off. I love painting this way with just simple single strokes. Um, I just think it's a real fun way to paint. All right, so what I'm showing you is utilizing color expression with velocity as an alternative to utilizing well with uh, the dry out reduced or bleed higher than uh, uh, your resaturation. Okay, so what we've talked about in this video is we've talked about using well with watercolor and real watercolor variants. We've talked about using dry out as a way to get this variation of color. And we showed how you can also get it with resaturation down low and bleed up high and your dry out uh, up high. And I think that will explain to the blog questioner uh, about how to make this type of brush and uh, hopefully gives all of you some information about well and uh, real water, about the well resaturation bleed and dry out. Okay, so <clears throat> as a recap, I'm telling you that there is this new brush class by Jason Moranto that is absolutely fabulous. It is eight hours of how to make brushes in a uh, painter. It has a very easy, direct approach. I've uh, reviewed about six or seven of the videos, and I'm telling you, they're the best I've ever seen uh, with uh, uh, best class I've ever seen about brush making, bar none. And I've looked at every class that's available out there. So I I'm telling you, you want to get this class. It is that good. Uh, and I'll give you the link of how to get it on my blog. Okay, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.